Alrighty guys, we're back for some fairy bombardment, and this is a Wilds of Aldrain standard brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks, and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to ya. Also, we do get that Discord link, as well as that Patreon link down in the description if you're interested in joining either of those up. Okay, what do we got packed into the build here? Arcane Bombardment was the build around, which reminds me, this was a suggestion down in the comments to go ahead and revisit Arcane Bombardment. So thank you so much for the suggestion. It's going to be a fun one. Definitely a card that I've been meaning to revisit as well. So it's a six mana enchantment. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard. Then copy each card exiled with Arc Arcane Bombardment you may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost. So obviously a very ridiculous enchantment, very powerful. Uh, hopefully we can pull something amazing off with it. Going to have a whole bunch of just terrific sorceries and instants in here to go ahead and copy, like burn down the house, for example. Yep, terrific sweeper. Also generating those devils helps us close up many games. It's going to be perfect in here. All four of them probably going to be required, dude. We're rocking a single big score. This is a four mana instant speed as an additional cost to cast this spell. You discard a card, draw two cards, create two treasure tokens, hopefully helping us ramp a little bit into the arcane bombardment. A little bit more ramp here with flick a coin, just a two of. It's a three mana instant speed, deals one damage to any target, create a treasure token, and draw a card. Going to be a pretty sweet one to go ahead and copy with that arcane bombardment. Same concept with like quick study, dude. Uh, three mana instant speed, draw two cards. Yep, copying that off of the bomb bomb bombardment. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Send help, guys. <laughs> yeah, copying it would be awesome. Keeping our hand nice and stocked every turn. And I mean, at that point, you're probably just wrapping up the game anyways. Uh, more awesome instants and sorceries that we wouldn't mind copying. Of course, like a lightning strike. We have three of them in here. We have a single play with fire because one mana cards is pretty important when you're playing bombardment. We have other awesome uh, one mana cards too that's going to work with the fairy theme. We got Ego Drain. It's a one mana sorcery speed. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. If you don't control a fairy, you exile a card from your hand. So if you have a fairy, you're just straight up, you're just taking a non-land card and having them discard it. Seems kind of ridiculous, and we're always going to want to have a fairy on the board uh, all the time anyways, so yeah, we'll go over the fairies last though. We also have a fairy fencing, this is an X and a black instant speed, target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, that creature gets an additional minus 3 until end of turn if you control a fairy, so if you have a fairy on the board, you can just do 1 black mana for a minus 3 minus 3 effect, pretty cool, uh, other than that. It would be like if you had a fairy, two mana for minus four, minus four, and so on. So, yeah, seems like a really solid piece of removal. Also rocking a single spell stutter in here. Uh, now, counter spells aren't like the greatest thing to pick up out of your grave with bombardment, which is why we only have one of them. Also, I just like don't like counter spells in general, but I figure it would still be worth having a one of, especially against like Atraxa decks and stuff. You never know, dude. So, um, counter target spell, unless it's controller pays two plus an additional one for each fairy you control. So that can be a lot that the opponent actually has to pay there. So I have a top end instant speed card, complete the circuit, six mana with convoke. <laughs> so our creatures can help us cast this spell. You may cast sorcery spells this turn as though they had flash. I don't know how often that's going to come into play, but we do have sorceries in here. So, and when you, uh, sorry, when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell twice you may choose new targets for the copies so this would be a really sick card to pick up with arcane bombardment and then like when you activate that and you uh the first card you select out of the arcane bombardment of course should be uh the complete the circuit or i guess the ordering does matter there whatever is on top of the stack wait no if you pick this up with arcane bombardment then the stack resolves and then this effect would happen uh, so then whatever you cast after the fact, huh, I didn't really think about that. Well, it's still probably going to be a cool top end card here. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just now solving that in my mind that if you're picking this up with bombardment, yeah, it's still going to, you're still going to have to wait to cast another card with it. Yeah, it still could be really cool. Let, let's see how it goes first before we uh, cut this. Uh, maybe we'll talk more about that in the final thoughts, right? 
So what kind of fairies do we got packed in here? We have 12 total fairies, uh, 12 total creatures, all of them being fairies. We got all four fairy dream thieves here, one mana, one, one flying, and when it ETBs, you surveil one, so we could uh, stock up our graveyard with essential instants and sorceries to eventually pick up with bombardment. Also, surveil one just happens to be good. Has a bottom ability for two and a black exile fairy dream thief from your graveyard. You may draw a card and lose one life. Nice. Beautiful. Have all four pick lock pranksters. This is a two mana one three flying vigilance and has an adventure side here. Free the Fey is a one and a blue instant speed mill four cards. So another way to keep our uh, graveyard stocked up. Then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among the milled cards into your hand. So like everything except for your land and the arcane bombardment can be picked up by that free the fey which seems pretty solid man i think it's going to be interesting in here we also have all four mocking sprites this is a three mana two one with flying instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast so that's going to be interesting to see how much that comes into play it's too bad it doesn't make our arcane bombardment any cheaper but other than that Making a lightning strike one mana could go a very long way in a bombardment style deck. So we'll see. We'll see. The mana base, guys. I thought about it for a bit. Hopefully it doesn't hold us up at all. Uh, some noteworthy things. We are rocking a Mirex over here. Of course, Crucible, Abandoned Mire, and the Soaring City all made the cut as well. And the dual lands, like I said, I thought about for a little bit. So hopefully it doesn't uh, hold us up. Another noteworthy dual land here, Restless Spire. Rocking the Bloodfell Caves because I don't think the tap land is going to hold us up too much in this deck. So you never know when that little life gain goes a little bit further. I wanted the Bloodfell Caves more than like another swamp or something too. Because I do think overall it's going to be relatively greedy. We got some honorable mentions over here guys. With the Arcane Bombardment we're not trying to cheat out too many ridiculous things. But I definitely thought about Breach the Multiverse for sure. The problem is we don't have like too many terrific creatures and planeswalkers to hit. But Breach the Multiverse is definitely worth the honorable mention because it hits stuff out of the opponent's deck too. So uh, definitely something to consider here. And Dark Slick Shores, I'm not sure why I have this in the honorable mentions. <laughs> Just chilling. I guess I, I wanted to bring it up in case. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know. Because I opted for the Underground River instead. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about the Pain Land. But if you are worried, then you could trade out the Pain Land for the Dark Slick Shores. Uh, we do want early black and early blue as well though so that's why we got the uh the pain land in there <laughs> all righty guys let's go ahead take it into some ranked and see how we do see if we can get right into that first game here heck yeah we do what am I expecting from the build, guys? Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm expecting like ultra super jank. <laughs> and I'm actually super concerned too about like all the Golgari builds because Terra Sunder is just going to eat Bombardment apart. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, keep. Of course, I'm expecting fun though. Other words, I wouldn't be playing it for the YouTube channel, right? <laughs> Start with that Xander's Lounge. No worries. Underground River comes down next turn, and we probably... Okay, Prowler. Well, hopefully there isn't too many Terra Sunders packed in. Oh, it's going to be like a graveyard build or something. We do have the Free the Fey open with the Lightning Strike, which I suppose we just keep both open instead of just playing the 3-1 for now, right? Try to get maximum value out of the adventures. We'll see... Rocking the Blossoming Tortoise, too. So a little bit of, like, Salti Ramp with uh, stuff going into their grave. That probably has that one... That one card that uh, gets power for each thing in the grave as well. Not not just the... Uh, not just the Nightmare here. There's another one, too. Okay, take the one. Pick Lock Prankster. Free the Fae. Let's see what we hit. Since we already have Bombardment in hand, we're not too worried about that. Oh, quick study. Oh, another Prankster. Let's get that quick study to hand. More mana. I don't mind seeing it at all. We could play the Mocking Sprite, but I feel like it gets picked up by spot removal right away. But that would be pretty good. That way, everything else gets a little cheaper. The draw two might not be the best right now either. Okay, we'll see if it lands. Let's try that Mocking Sprite. 
It lands, but does it survive? The ultimate question. It does survive. Wow. Uh, up against those colors with two mana open. No go for the throat. That's good news for us. Ooh, Sanctum of Nature. Okay. Wonder if they have the other the other end of that. They do. Titania. Sweet. All right. Well, got three for that. Titania is a little hard to pick up, huh? Probably get the tap land down and go maybe big score. So it helps us ramp next turn. Oh, we should do it while they're tapped out since they have blue, huh? Yeah, let's do that. Big score helps us ramp and I'm going to ditch the underground river. Because if we really need a mana, we can always play that Abandoned Mire. Or we could just draw into more mana, too. That's true. One, two, three, four, five. So we could use one Lightning Strike. But I'd rather have the extra treasure to play Bombardment and activate a card at the same time. So you can't swing into that reach on Titania. It just happens to be a relatively solid like body on this creature. Like three mana, three, four with reach. Happens to be all right, huh? Blossoming well, Tortoise coming down. We could ping it with the Lightning Strike, but again, if we wait till next turn, drop the Bombardment, and then go Lightning Strike, then we'll pick something up right away out of the grave, which would be the big score, I suppose, right? All right, passes back. Mirax? Yeah, it would be the big score, which is pretty good. I'm going to save Mirax in hand for now. Let's get that Haunted Ridge down. Arcane Bombardment. We'll ditch the Mountain when it comes time for that big score. Blossoming Tortoise going bye-bye. Costing one, dude. I'll tell you what. Pretty sweet. Big score. Mountain. Couple treasures. We can use those treasures for a quick study on their turn and activate the Arcane Bombardment again, too. This looks like a wild battle, man. All right. Make sure we don't swing in on accident, because that reach is gross. End turn. So yeah, quick study on their turn. Our hand is going to get a little insane. Ah, uh, the spell stutter being open is really good here, though, too, huh? So maybe it's going to be spell stutter instead of quick study. No! The who endures. One, two, three, four. I could... We could go quick study, activate the... Thing, pick up the lightning strike. Um, one second, opponent. I, I'm thinking this through because we have the second arcane bombardment in hand. Oop. I just hit my mic. I'm sorry, guys. I hope that didn't get picked up. <laughs> I'm just flailing my arms about as I usually do. Big score. That's, that's still really good, isn't it? That's still really, really good. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is a counter spell, but either way, bombardment still uh, activates here. Go big score and uh, ditch the. Ah. Uh, uh, Mirex, I guess. Lightning strike. Do we ping face? It's too bad the Titania has that four butt, huh? Let's pick up the Prowler. I feel like just using it as removal right now might be a little better than pinging face, unfortunately. Burn down the house in hand. Burn down the house in hand. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. And bombardment's out. And we're going to go ahead and thin this deck. Let's go ahead. Grab a red source. We got a lot of red sources out there. Oh, should have grabbed a blue source for the spell stutter so we don't have to use the treasure. Well. That's probably okay, right? We'd rather spell stutter like a counter spell from them or something. And we could still go burn down the house. We'd lose our sprite, but at least there'd be two more cards gone from them too. Eventually, we're just going to keep spamming out those burn down the house with the other bombardment is the hope. So, okay, coast comes down. Lots to think about in this build, huh? If we go bombardment, we have two open and nothing else to do except for the spell stutter when it comes time. Which could be really bad. So if we start with the burn. 
So burn, burn, start swinging. They have great blocks. Angster can come down after. All right, let's wipe this board, huh? I think that's the that's the first thing, and we can swing with spire for the turn too. I don't think that's what we end up doing though. We're just gonna play prankster and keep the spell setter open with one of our treasures too. Yeah, losing that fairy definitely sucks, but getting two creatures off their board seemed pretty essential, huh? And then hopefully we just start uh, spamming out the burn down the house with our bombardment when it comes time. Old Rutstein, that's worth the counter, right? I think so. Since they're they're missing some land here too, I think that was totally worth the counter spell. Bombardment, two open, so lightning strike. Uh, plus the treasure over here too. We could go lightning strike on their turn. I think we go it on our turn. Hopefully this isn't spell stutter. It's spell stutter. <laughs> Crap. All right, decline that. At least when it comes time to cast like instance out of our hand, maybe we'll be able to counter like instant speed something from our hand and then activate the spell stutter to counter what they're playing. I was thinking if we could get some more damage through. Yeah, we, we could have hit quick study or burn down the house as well. Old stick fingers is a 10-10. Let's go opponent. How do we even deal with that dude? How do we even deal? They kept two mana open over here too. Now we just gotta like keep slamming damage through, I suppose, right? Let's go ahead and attempt the one ones. Come on. Yeah, burn down the house. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so devils decline. And then devils. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then we just full swing a few times and we have Xander's Lounge open. Crucible open. I guess we could go crucible, full swing with that too. I'm going to, actually. Every turn matters at this point, I would say, right? Just extra damage getting through. And I'm going to keep the Xander's Lounge. Okay, we'll go Devil to face. Now, hopefully, hopefully... Oh, uh, Prankster has Vigilance, so that's good at least. Okay, going to keep the Lounge in case we have to cycle it. Lots to think about in this build, dude, but uh, I feel like we're doing pretty good so far. Worst thing they could do is somehow get this old stick fingers to uh, 19. Uh, Sky Fisher Spider. Wow, they sacrificed their old stick fingers. Oh, to hit the bombardment. Darn. That's pretty rough stuff, man. Uh, but they don't have too much here, so I'm just going to power up Restless Spire and go for it. They have a good block into the Spire, but then everything else gets through as well. Yeah, GG. GG opponent. See, they still had one mana open as well, so that could have been something there. Ranks just recently reset. Chilling at the bottom of gold. That was a really good first match, wasn't it, guys? I'm, I'm pretty happy about that one. Lots to think about, but uh, I feel like... After, after that match being like a really good practice match and seeing what the deck is doing, I'm feeling uh, much more confident going into this now. Mm. We go first. That's good. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm a little concerned that we don't have anything to do for a few turns after Dream Thief, but like we have so much to draw into, so I, I think we'll be all right overall. Forest from the opponent. Okay, let's just go ahead and get the underground river down. Because the, the mana isn't punishing us at all. Well, let's send that underground. I don't think we need that right now, right? Plus, with a, with a good chance of seeing more land eventually anyways, I kind of just want to find something that actually does something. Immune with spirits. Oh, crap, dude. This, um... We know how aggressive Celestine enchantments can be, so we're probably in trouble. Play with fire. There we go. That's good to have. At least we can immediately ping something when it comes down, like a Jukai Naturalist or whatever. 
keep Mirex back for now. Even though I don't think we'll be using it for mana fixing anytime soon. Yeah, play with fire is good. Any of our removal uh, would be good. Ego Drain would have probably been better, though. That way we can actually pick stuff up before they play it. Naturalist is a goner. As soon as, as, soon as priority passes to us, it is a goner. <laughs> yeah, land and then the one mana for removal, unfortunately. So they do get to do all this before... Well, now we can activate it, and we might as well. I mean, that was the plan anyways. We wanted to take care of Naturalist. But Dream Thief Exile isn't even too bad, so... Either way, we want Naturalist off this board, so... Ooh! Nice. Okay, Mirex finally dropping on this board. Might as well use that as the black source for the turn, right? Dream Thief. Big score? Yeah, we probably keep that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we keep that. Very, very slow start for us, guys. Uh, potentially would have been a mulligan hand, but overall, not too bad. At least Naturalist isn't on the board right now. Transients, okay. So I'm wondering if we save that burn down the house or if we just start swinging. We probably just start swinging, right? Like, the, the thought process with the big score was, of course, like, we'll be able to ramp right into bombardment but like right now with this board eventually bombardment will be able to pick up more yeah the big score uh of course discard would have been crucible so since i already played it we're dedicated to the burn down the house play oh they're gonna accept that trade oh they're gonna take the four okay uh Good news, but the bad news is we know how much life gain Celestia enchantments can have, and we've been seeing a huge uptick in the amount of Katildas being played. The 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 scary flying Katilda that has life link. Uh, luckily, it won't be too it won't be too massive right out the gate here. Alex buffing everything. See, we would have went big score for the turn. We still would have had the burn down the house in hand, but it's kind of the concept for the bombardment. You know what? Maybe it is Bombardment for the turn and then big score next turn. Still got a full swing. Still getting them pretty low. They don't know what's in hand. Let's go for it. Let's do this. I don't think we're dead next turn. Although they do have a Michigo's Reign of Truth. But we're at 16, so I, I don't think they're going to be able to do anything. <laughs> Best case scenario for them would get this bombardment off the board, you know what I mean? Because if they end up just slamming a bunch of damage through and we go big score and grab that burn down the house, then they're in trouble. But that's only 7 damage, so we would still need something else. Which we do have burn in the deck, so I suppose we could find like a lightning strike or something. So we had a slow start, but it also looks like the opponent had a pretty slow start too, huh? There's the Katilda. Crap, dude. That life gain is rough business. We got to take care of that immediately. Which goes Reign of Truth. Hopefully the Calyx doesn't buff that Kami of Transients past the five. Okay, we can still wipe this board. Big score picks up the burn. And then, well, it could pick up the play with fire. It, it's going to come down to a little bit of luck here, guys. Oh, crap. They get the copy. Alex is cast though, right? No, they're gonna get the plus one counter. Crap, crap. Okay, okay, it goes back down. Okay. Whew, my heart. Okay. 50% chance, guys. We flipped the coin. Can we wipe this board? We don't even want to start with the swing because of the lifelink. Like this, like this is what we start with. Period. So let's do this. 50% chance. Come on, guys. No! <laughs> The play with fire is not going to get us there. Well, it is what it is, huh? Mocking Sprite. No, doesn't do it. We're still looking for, at this point, we're going to have four mana open. Flick a coin. 
straws gets us our treasure back. We could do that on their turn. That's actually perfect, guys. Instant speed, do it on their turn. And again, yeah, we can't swing here because uh, once they block, the lifelink happens. And so, so we pass. And I suppose we wait to see what happens. We wait to see what they end up casting. Oh, we want to do it before they get the buff off of the Reign of Truth, though. So can we do it on the stack here, right? I believe so. Okay. Flick a coin. Bombardment needs to not hit the big score. No, the big score! <laughs> okay, okay. We lost two coin flips, guys. Um, I guess we start with big score then. And discard the, the sprite. Play with fire. Um, at that point, we could have hit the calyx, actually. Yeah, yeah. Since we knew the play with fire was going to happen anyways. Quick study's a good draw. I guess we'll we'll draw into that since we're getting treasure, bombardment. Pawn it down to two. At that point, do we have enough blocker? No, because Katilda wins them in the air anyways. There's a burn down the house. Oh man, this one really could have gone either way. Like for real though. And we only have one uh, play with fire in the build. So, dude, good game. Good, that was a really good... Dude, these matches have been awesome, huh? If that Katilda didn't come down, we actually would have won, right? Yeah, we would have swung last turn with the Devils, even without... Even without uh, getting unlucky with the Bombardment there. Which isn't really, like, super unlucky. Yeah, too bad. If these had First Strike, though... Then we'd ping the devil damage before the Katilda swings it. No nothing has first strike on this board. So either way, the lifelink's going to gain them right back uh, into this, unfortunately. But if something did have first strike, that's fun to think about. It's a really good one, man. <laughs> yeah, or if we would have won the coin flip too, right? If we would have won the coin flip, actually picked up the burn down the house one of those two times. That would have been sick. Oh, man. The deck's playing out uh, much better than I was expecting as well. 27 minutes in, totally have time for one or two more games, depending on how long they are. Hopefully two more. This is a fun time, dude. Thanks again for the suggestion. Arcane Bombardment is like one of those cards. It's been out for so long that I've, I just keep like putting off returning to it. You know what I mean? And it's definitely been long enough. And by mixing them with fairies, this is pretty fun. Spell stutter in hand. All right, we give this a shot, huh? I don't think this is bad at all. Swamp from the opponent, but no turn one play. Could have easily just been a cut down. Could be virus beetle. <laughs> okay, um, let's ditch the island. Because overall, I think the deck needs more red sources. Just like overall, right? Too open for Stutter and Prankster and also the Fairy Fencing if we wanted to pay X is 1. But I don't think we want to do that. It's going to be the uh, Free the Fae probably. Unless there's something really important that we want to spell Stutter. Yeah, I'd say that's important enough. <laughs> I think that's worth the spell Stutter. Hopefully I don't regret that for, like, their turn four shielded, right? Uh, mocking Sprite. Probably worth getting down. But then again, so much removal in mono black. Maybe it wasn't. And maybe it was still just Prankster. See if we see, like, a better instant or sorcery that we want to see. I don't know. It, it depends. It depends what we can get to survive out there. Because a second Sprite, too... Liliana, minus two probably. So that would have been a good counter as well, but they were waiting for a creature to come down first. So if they go plus one on Liliana and we have Mocking Sprite on the board next turn, then we can swing in the air at that Lily. Ooh, complete the circuit. That'll be fun to try. 
if we get, if we get there. Yeah, without the fourth land, unfortunately, I ditched that island. Maybe it should have been something else earlier. Sinking, we we wait. How much mana do I have in here? Ah, oh, virtue of persistence. So their Liliana is safe. They go plus one. We ditch the complete the circuit, right? Because it's not doing anything right now. And eventually picking that up with the bombardment could be really cool. And again, while I was going over the deck, yeah, it it's it's a little weird how it ends up working with bombardment because like when you copy it with com with bombardment then it's the next instant or sorcery spell you cast that turn, so you still have to cast something else after the fact as well. Oh, speaking of the devil, bombardment in hand. This doesn't help us find land, and they have the minus two. So as soon as we play this... Crap. Crap, deed. Okay. I guess we wait? <laughs> This, this one's going to be a particularly bad one since I don't have a lot of mana, huh? Bust on Lily. Hmm, you know what? Maybe we didn't wait, and there's a small chance that we end up finding uh, Play With Fire on the Prankster. Yeah, and then we could have done that on our turn so the Liliana wouldn't have... Yeah, that small chance, but you never know. I guess the fencing, not a lot of like great targets. And I, I'm not going to use fencing on the virus beetle anytime soon. Swing for one. Liliana being at three. Let's see if we get punished and see that uh, play with fire off the top. Because we very well might get massively punished. Or even more punished if we end up milling a bunch of lands to the grave. Let's see it though. Okay, two lands to the grave. That's not too bad. And a uh, quick study. There we go. That'll help us draw into more. There we go. There we go. We got our fourth as well. Okay. That Liliana is such a problem, though. Could draw off a Dream Thief, too. Quick study, draw twos. We already played our land for the turn. No real reason to do that now. What are we discarding? I guess burn down the house after the fact. I'd love to get that prankster down. Then we can't do anything else. So I guess we just like awkwardly pass it back, huh? And just do the quick study for the turn. They go plus on Liliana, discard the burn down the house. This Liliana has been a real pain. Go for the swing first. Maybe they want all four of their cards in hand. Oh, 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 before the discard, we'll activate Quick Study too. We might find something better that we want to discard instead. But Burn Down the House isn't a bad one because we can eventually pick it up with that bombardment anyways. Looks like they're missing some mana too. Alright, Quick Study. No blue source over there, so at least we know we're getting the draw to. Uh, Prankster, we're going to keep the land for sure. Is it... Prankster? No, because if we can get two creatures on the board, we can get around the minus two for a turn. As painful as it- wait, burn down the house hits planeswalkers too. It's Prankster. It's definitely Prankster. Then we just go burn down the house for- oh, another burn down the house. That's really good. Let's get rid of that Liliana, huh? Wait, yeah, it's at four. If it was at three, we'd go devils, but it's at four, so... We could still go Devils. No, 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 no. No, since we have two of them, we're just, we're getting rid of that Liliana deed. Let's get it out of there. <laughs> uh, good old classic two for one. Easy, simple. It's too bad the opponent didn't have like a Trespasser out there too, because that would have been really good. Or like a Soren. wow. Yeah, we would have hit way more targets then. What do you guys think? Bombardment, get greedy with it? Let them use the Soren for a turn, or do we just go... Nah, greed, let's do it. Arcane Bombardment, hitting the board. Plus, if they play like Shieldred or something, like it's much better to just go ahead and hit more with this burn down the house. Well, they could easily have us discard it, huh? Now, how much 
enchantment removal is in mono black not too much right there's some stuff does like veraska hit non-land permanents turn them into treasure is it non-land or is it creatures i feel like veraska hits creatures but i i don't remember right now mm, what did they find off the soren liliana <gasps> Crap, they go plus one and we lose the burn down the house, which means... Oh, dude, that was such a good grab. Which means we're going to have to find another instant or sorcery. That's really bad. Burn down the house was like such an ideal... Such an ideal thing to uh, play. So if we see like a land off the top, we're in trouble, dude. Like a lot of trouble. <gasps> Flick a coin. Beautiful. Okay. The question here is what do we end up hitting with this? Mm, two burned on the house in the grave. There's so many. Like, there's there's probably a really low chance. I'm just going to ping face. <laughs> See if we hit that burn down the house, huh? Going to be complete the circuit. <laughs> nice. See, now this is where the awkwardness comes in because it has to be the next uh, instant or sorcery that we end up playing. And we don't have one, unfortunately. But, good draws. Going down to 12. See if, let's see if we hit like a, like a play with fire or something. Xander's Lounge. Um, should probably get this on the board to surveil. Uh, maybe we should have done that first, but then we wouldn't have had the one mana for the play with fire when it came time. Yeah, we don't need that. And maybe we keep this. No, we don't. We don't. We can't keep it in hand because we'll just discard it to the Liliana. Unless they go minus two here. Okay, guys. We need to see more instants and sorceries off the top. Uh, complete the circuit was terrific, but yeah. Yeah, we, we, like, we need a stocked hand for this to work. A little bit awkward. So we might need to talk more about that in the final thoughts. Now, the way this reads, it reads, you may cast any number of copies without paying their mana cost. So if you put, complete the circuit on top of the stack, then the other one cast underneath it, would that work? Um, no, right? Wait, would it? Because it's already on the stack, so it's already been cast, right? So yeah, you still need something else in hand to play after the fact. A little bit that's a little bit confusing huh all right i'm just gonna go no blocks we're in danger either way the best thing we can do another burn down the house or any instant or sorcery to grab a burn down the house from the grave like we need to clean up these planeswalkers period what do you guys suppose shieldred here shieldred would be a good grab but yeah burn down the house cleans it if if we can find it extract the truth Oh, sacrifices and enchantment. Ah, oh, opponent. How cool. Dude, that's perfect, man. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder what the odds of having that in the deck is. That's a, that's a great utility card to have in there. With Beseech the Mirror being able to grab your one-ofs and stuff. Dude, massive props. Holy cow. That was sick. Only some ego drains. Well, at least we can hit their swamp, right? <laughs> no, we'll we'll draw. We'll draw. Um that ego drain isn't doing too much here. Lightning strike. I suppose we hit the Liliana right now right that soren is getting super dangerous but what a time dude hopeless nightmare well there goes our ego train unfortunately <laughs> the brutal deck from the opponent i can only imagine graveyard trespassers in there too because of the ward discard yep they get their other fire in the air 
Get a 1-1 one, one on the ground, okay? It's time to spam out our fairies and hope that they don't find a Liliana off the top or something crazy, man. That Liliana grab off the Soren was wild. Prankster, I think we keep that on top because the adventure can help us find a burn down the house. But I mean, at this point, our setup is gone. Them having us sacrifice the bombardment was probably the GG's, right? Because bombardment was the best case through. Dude, that's crazy. But spamming out a bunch of fairies was pretty good. We can triple block this 2-3. Doesn't seem like the greatest thing. No way. Okay, they go Virtue. That's probably equally as scary. Virtue start bringing back like virus beetles, braids. Anything we wipe now can be uh, brought back, unfortunately. Oh, big score would be so good, but we need another card in hand, but they kept our hand so empty. Darn. Wait, 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 wait. What's the Soren chilling at? Three? Okay, lightning strike. Wait a minute. Yeah. We lightning strike the two, three, then full swing at the Soren. Virtue of persistence is going to be such a pain in the butt, though. Uh, Prankster has Vigilance, too, which is sweet. We're doing good. Like, we're not doing bad at all, are we? Now we just start swinging face every turn. Well, they do have a Virtue of Persistence on the board, so I can, I can still only imagine it's heavily leaning towards them. Also, Rankle's Prank just chilling in their hand. Uh, that would be the Dream Thief that we would want to sacrifice here. Each player loses four life. Oh, yeah, we're going to die. Each player sacrifices two creatures. Oh, they go right for the Shieldred True Scriptures. That's a discard next turn and a mill, and then they get everything back. Oh, we're definitely playing this out, and we're definitely letting the opponents play this out, like, instead of conceding. Because this was a really fun match, let's be real. And, like, this play, like, blew my mind on so on so many levels, dude. Beseech the mirror, extract the truth, get rid of our only win con. There's a burn? Can we get there in time? No, probably not. And two, only two open after the fact. Okay, well. Burn down the house. I mean, I guess... I guess it depends, too. <laughs> depends what they have in hand. They have two swamps open. Like, this is five damage. And then next turn, they're not getting all the cards yet, so it could be another five next turn. I just don't know what else we would possibly do. Ah, uh, cut down for one of the pranksters. So it's only four anyways. Let's see what they grab off of this virtue. They're looking at our grave. Probably the braids at this point raids and i wonder if like when that rankles prank is going to come down for four i'll oh, get some flyers in the air that's a good that's a good call actually making all of their instants and sorceries one less too but yeah like like braids and then get rid of an enchantment would have dealt two to our face as well but they might not have had lethal because then this is just four damage, so and we're still we'd still be at one after all of that, so. Either way, I think they can play the long game and just wait for the true scriptures to flip. Rankle's prank, down to three. Go for the throat, swing for one, down to two. So if it was, actually, if it if they did grab their braids, then it would have been game. Right? Because we have no enchantment. They could have just uh, got rid of Hopeless Nightmare and we would have lost two to the Braids. Unless I'm thinking wrong with Braids. Yeah, that player loses two life. Either way, it's still like... Like, they, they can easily wait this out, you know? Restless Spire. That actually could have been pretty neat throughout this game, huh? Swing for three. Either way, we're dead in the air. I mean... No, we're not, actually, because we still have the Mocking Sprite play. But since we're at one, they can go wide enough. Mm, and then we have the Devils to block if we wanted to. They're getting all the creatures. Yeah, it's a full swing. It, like, even if we could survive next turn, it's still a full swing. Because this is the opponent's. And that's the most fun thing to do. 
down to seven. They get that, and then True Scriptures flips. They get Shieldred. Um, they get all of our Pranksters, all of our Sprites. Has to be a non-token creature. Oh, since it's a non-token creature, then yeah, then we wouldn't have had a flyer in the air to block anyways. So the two was going to get through regardless of if we kept the devils back or not. Dude, great game. Holy cow. Fun time. Very fun matches today, guys. <laughs> Very fun ones. I think we really had a great chance in all of those too, right? Of course, um, what was the... What was the win rate? We won the first one, right? And then we lost the next two. But I, like I said, I feel like we just had a terrific chance. What a fun time, dude. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. I will claim that. Let's go ahead. Go over the deck list again. We are 45 minutes in. Fay Bombardment is what I called the deck list. Thank you again for the suggestion down in the comments. I appreciate it. Um, I do my best to go ahead and do as many suggestions as possible. And of course, I, I really focus in on the Patreon suggestion. So that's one of the main draws uh, to become a patron of the channel, as I will always do the patron suggestions first before anything else. Uh, but either way, I still do look in the comments for any suggestions and Arcane Bombardment was brought up. So hopefully I put together a cool enough list. We really saw how complete the circuit did nothing. <laughs> that's what we saw today. And uh, it might have very well been the deck we were up against, they were draining our hand, dude. Everything in our hand was getting discarded. We were discarding so much that game. It was definitely mono black discard, right? But like a really, really like insane version of it that looked actually relatively competitive, didn't it? Right? Like the way they were able to do stuff. Of course, all the planeswalkers were really powerful too. I think in uh, those two losses, I think things really could have just lined up better. If we would have won a couple coin flips or even just one then i think it would have heavily been leaning towards us i was not expecting mono black to be able to deal with my bombardment at all that was wild dude that was so cool uh, that they were able to actually take that out um so what would i do i think more testing is required for sure i actually think it played out really well overall um that might be because we didn't like see the most crazy meta decks today like, we didn't go up against Mono Red, for example, which might just completely run us over before we have time to set up anything. But at the same time, we have decent early game removal with Play With Fire, Fencing, Lightning Strike, uh, the Spell Stutter. The one of Spell Stutter actually did it a lot. Also, Flick, Flick a Coin isn't that bad against, like, Mono Red either. Being able to ping uh, Phoenix Chick out of the air and stuff while ramping and drawing happens to be relatively decent. Also, like, good blockers against, like, Mono Red, so been interesting to see if we would have been able to go up against that outside of that like not getting a chance to actually successfully do anything with ego drain kind of sucked because that was one of the main things to try out in here and also just like you know a terrific card to copy with the bombardment grab that from the grave now every time you play something you're taking a card out of the opponent's hand so there's like a lot of setup involved that we didn't really get a chance to see today but outside of that we i feel like it really did a thing which is uh I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed by this little Grixis uh, janky build. So if anything, I would drop the completed circuit and try something else. Maybe we'll try that Breach the Multiverse instead. I really thought Bre uh, Complete the Circuit would do a little bit more as a one of like we didn't get to see it too often anyways outside that last game. But you guys saw how like easy it was to get like a board state relatively easy, right? Burn down the house tokens being spammed out there. A bunch of uh, fairies potentially surviving. It's not too difficult to have four creatures on the board in this deck and so convoke your four creatures have this be two mana and then just play like another burn down the house or something you know what i mean copy it twice more devils uh or or anything for that matter copying anything twice is kind of insane man copying a lightning strike twice is still really cool that's nine damage potentially you could just spam into the opponent's face uh, big score is not a bad one to copy as long as you have the cards to discard and uh, unfortunately again yeah that opponent that kept our hand empty that deck in particular might just be awful to go up against this deck right because we always want something in our hand on that note maybe we need more card draw too like the quick study was pretty sick but i wouldn't necessarily like trade anything out for more quick studies so yeah i think it's just more testing required huh mana base was good didn't hold us up at all I know, like, all these dual land, it's kind of crazy, man. Like, all these all these rares and whatnot. But, yeah, it didn't hold us up, luckily. 
and the Bloodfell Caves. That's a that's a budget. <laughs> that's a budget card in the mana base. So again, I don't think that one turn of playing this out tapped is going to hold up this deck at all. Like we saw that just like based on how the curve is, we saw how we could successfully play these tapped land like the Lounge and Bloodfell Caves and still have like you know play it on turn three and still have your two mana open for uh, Spell Stutter or Lightning Strike or Free the Fey. I gotta, I gotta bring that up at least once, right? Free the Fey was sick. Being able to grab pretty much whatever we wanted out of this, uh, seeing four cards, stocking up the graveyard for a bombardment, and then still, like, it's essential. Like, yeah, you could say, like, what, we could just play Impulse? Is that the card? I don't I don't play much uh, blue, so I don't know the uh, card name right now. Let's see. Yeah, Impulse. Like, you could say, yeah, we'll just play Impulse. It doesn't go into the grave, but like it actually just helps you find more. But then you're not playing a fairy. And without the fairy, the spell stutter gets a little worse. The ego drain gets a little worse. The fairy fencing gets a little worse, right? So uh, just the fact that that's also tacked on to a fairy. And also like just, yeah, adventures are kind of incredible. Even the janky ones can be pretty decent, man. Because you get two cards in one. So of course you got to pay the mana for them, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, mocking sprite was sick yeah dude i really like this one this is a fun time <laughs> guys if you made it this far into the video for real y'all are champions i super duper appreciate you and i will see you in the next video